Welcome to BSG webinars, everyone. My name is Dan Carney, Graphic Design Manager at BSG, coming to you from my home office in Eden Prairie, Minnesota. Thanks for joining us. This is our eighth episode. Future episodes are posted on our website, as well as a link to video recordings of our past episodes. This page can be found by going to bsgcraftbrewing.com and clicking on the webinar style, or going directly to bsgcraft.com forward slash webinars. New episodes will usually air every Thursday at 1 p.m. Central Standard Time. Next week, we'll be presenting on Wednesday at 1 p.m. Central Standard Time. That webinar will be presented by Colin Johnson of Crisp Malt. His presentation is titled Scottish Malt, History, Terroir, and Flavor by Crisp Malt. Throughout the webinar, please ask questions through the Q&A function. Following the presentation, I'll pass some questions along to our guests. You can also send follow-up questions to webinars at bsgcraft.com. Today's speaker is Jason McCann, Director of Customer Quality Assurance at RAR Malt & Co. His talk is titled, RAR Malt Innovation, Introducing Two New Malts of Reputation. And with that, I'll hand it over to Jason to get us started today. Welcome, Jason. Thanks, Dan. Uh, happy to be here. Um, thank, you for, thank you all for, uh, for coming and uh, we're pretty excited. I'd like to you know, share the two new malts that we're, we're going to be introducing. Um, you know, a little bit about myself. Uh, I've been with RAR for a little over three years now. Uh, prior to that, I've worked for a couple of other malting companies. So I've been in malting for a total of uh, 13 plus years now. Um, so yeah, uh, you know, excited, like I said, excited to be here and excited to, to talk about these malts. So um, I'll go ahead and uh, share my screen and I have kind of a, a very brief presentation. And uh, like Dan said, you know, please feel free to, uh, to send your comments. That's, that's kind of gonna dr drive this uh, presentation today. So um, again, thank you for your time today. So a little bit of history of, uh, of RAR Malting Company, for those of you who are, are not familiar, um, it's founded in 1847 by German immigrant uh, William RAR. So it's, it's uh, over 170 years old. It's older than Minnesota and Canada. Um, the company is still 99.9% .9 family owned. Uh, what you see in the picture is our, is our Shakopee facility. It's one of the three facilities that we have in, in North America. Um, and it is this, currently the second largest malting site in the world. Uh, we can produce uh, around 442,000 metric tons and we operate six individual malt houses. So it's pretty nice. It gives us flexibility to, to make a lot of different products. Each one is kind of suited uh, more or less to, to different styles and we have the flexibility to be able to, you know, fit the, fit the proper style to the proper malt house. So it's a nice benefit to have. So the two new malts, uh, we're pretty excited to, to share these. Um, the first one is the raw malted oats and it's targeted for use in, in many of today's popular styles. Um, I know it's, it's seeing a lot of use in the, in the hazy IPAs, the New England style IPAs. Um, it's pretty straightforward malt and, and I'll talk a little bit more about that as we go on. Uh, the North Star Pills, uh, it's a lower color and less modified uh, traditional Pilsner malt uh, that would really be a good fit for just about anything. Um, you know, I think it's very well suited to, to the lager uh, styles, but it's a nice uh, base malt to use for, for just about any style that you have. And, you know, just want to make clear too that, you know, even though it's less modified, it still has plenty of modification um, to make sure that we're, we're not going to have any issues. So the journey, why, why did we choose to, to make these products now? Um, you know, a lot of it is, is based on customer insight. So hearing from a lot of you folks out there, you know, what, what's missing from our portfolio um, that people would like to see, you know, it's, uh, you know, as change, as styles change and evolve, you know, we have to evolve with it. You know, we're, we're, uh, very old malting company and um, you know, styles change since what they did when, when RAR first started, things are, things are very different. So we wanna be able to provide the malts that, that everybody needs to, to make today's popular styles. 
So there are malted oats. Uh, what we did was we set out to different, differentiate a little bit from what's currently available. Um, we targeted a bit higher total protein. And uh, what we found though is when the product was all, when it was all said and done, we had uh, low viscosity, which should make for a little bit less uh, of a loudering issue. Um, you know, the viscosity is a good indicator of, of really how it's going to flow through the entire process, you know, keying in on, on something like beta glucan doesn't always just tell you the whole story, especially with something like wheat or oats. There's a lot of other things that are going on there as well. So when you look at the viscosity, that's a, that's a pretty good indication of whether or not you're going to have problems. Um, we're still kind of testing some other varieties. This was our first uh, step up to the plate with this one. And we were able to find a, a Midwestern source for this of oats. Um, but we, when we kind of, as we, as we get more into this, what we really want to be able to do is make sure that we can get a variety that, that does what we need. Uh, we can make a consistent product, high quality product. And uh, it's, you know, it's easy to source. Um, some of the issues you run into with, with things like oats and wheat is that uh, a lot of it goes into the food industry. So, you know, identity preservation gets to be a little bit um, more of an issue. So, um, you know, we have to make sure we find something that works and, and most likely we'll, we'll contract for that at that point. So specifications, you know, I, like I said, this, this may evolve as we go, uh, as, as time passes a little bit, but uh, this is kind of where we're set at right now. The color is in the, the two and a half to three and a half range. Uh, moisture is, uh, is going to be less than four and a half. The beta-glucan less than 150 and viscosity uh, less than 1.6. So, and you can see kind of a, from a flavor profile standpoint, you can see from the, the spider chart there, you know, it's got, uh, you know, more of a uh, green grass, um, you know, kind of, uh, kind of in that range um, of flavors. And then uh, North Star Pills. Um, this one is, uh, is a little bit different um, than, than our current Pilsner offering. Uh, what we wanted to try to do is, is to make something more similar to those from Europe. Um, you know, a little bit different from our North American style that we currently use. Um, you know, the, the biggest difference is, is this one set out in the actual process to make this as a final product. Um, our standard Pilsner malt is, um, is, is, a, is more of a, of a blend to meet these characteristics. So it's a little bit different, still both very good. And, you know, because of the way this is processed, they're gonna have a little bit different flavor profiles. So, um, you know, may or may not be what you're shooting for, but, uh, you know, this one has more of a honey, nutty, uh, sweet bread character to it. Um, it's, it's definitely lower in color and overall modification. Um, and as we move forward with this, our, our focus for this and, you know, kind of tying in with the name and everything, you know, being North Star Pills, we, we really want to focus on, on Midwestern barley varieties. And, and there's a lot of good ones out there and there's going to be more to come. And, you know, barley is one of those things too, where, you know, the, the more we can spread out, um, our risk area, the better. I mean, if, if we allow everything just to float over to the West, um, kind of puts all the eggs in one basket. So, you know, it's nice to still have, you know, malt or barley varieties coming in from, from the Midwest. You know, it just kind of spreads that out a little bit further. So that's what we kind of wanted to target for this. And it's going to be uh, low to medium protein, you know, depending on the crop year. You know, obviously we'd like to see it at the lower end if at all possible, but some years that, that may float up more towards that 11 and a half range. And the specifications for this, you know, we're looking at a color of one and a half to two. Um, you know, ideally we will ride right around that probably 1.6 to 1.8. Uh, Kolbach, uh, we're, we're looking at uh, 38 to 42 and, and most likely we will be closer to the 48 or to the 38 then we will, will be to the 42 so we kind of want to hug more of that bottom end there but still have enough there to make it uh to make it louder well um, and not cause any issues uh, beta glucan it will be sub 150 
Uh, DP will be, you know, probably in most cases, it'll be um, maybe 130 plus, but uh, we're shooting for 120 plus. I think our most recent batches have been right around the 140 range. So um, that's what the nice thing about this is you still, you, you get that added benefit of the, the light killing process of, of kind of holding those enzymes intact. Um, fan, we're looking at probably around 150 to 200. Again, that's going to vary based on the protein level quite a bit. And moisture, uh, four to five. And you may see a little bit higher moisture on this type of product just because of the, the very light kiln process that we're doing. And from a flavor standpoint, you can see it's, it's got a really strong honey, uh, nutty, um, you know, sweet bread character, maybe a little bit of grassy, which is to be expected with the, with the low, the light kilning. Um, so yeah, it's a, it's a product we're, we're very excited about. And that's really all I had on those. So, you know, I look forward to your questions. Thank you, Jason. Um, I do have a couple of questions for you. I'll let you get your video started here. Um, so one question was, what was the driving force for creating the North Star Pills? Was it customer based or was it just something that we felt was needed in the market? Um, it was a little bit of both really. I mean, you know, we, we had, you know, I, I try to, to work with the sales uh, staff as much as possible. I mean, they're, they're the ones out there in the, in the field hearing all of the, the customer recommendations. And, you know, just from my past experience in working, you know, I've worked for a specialty uh, or a malt house that focused on specialty malts and also a malt house that, that focused more on, on base malts. And, you know, kind of one thing I, I noticed when I, when I came in at RAR is, is just kind of trying to find a product that kind of fell in this, this true Pilsner um, or European style, I guess you could call it Pilsner range. Um, we have very good North American style Pilsners, but this one is going to be a little bit more similar to, to what you would get from a European style. Um, so uh, at least, at least as good as we can get using North American varieties. So yep. um, that's kind of, that's kind of what we did. So it was kind of a little bit of both, just what we were hearing and also, you know, just noticing some gaps in our own portfolio. And it's a nice fit, you know, in, in, a, in terms of malting it, it's just a good, um, in terms of how you process, how we do our process, it was, it was a good fit for that. So. Sure. And uh, next question is, when is it available? That's a good question, and I don't want to misspeak on this one. So I, I, I know it's going to be coming soon. I think it's going to be more towards the, the early August range. Um, I think with, with all that, you know, all of us are dealing with at this time um, and uh, some of the restrictions that we had and some of the, the fallout that came with all that, I think some of these things got maybe delayed a little bit, but um, it'll be available very soon. So. Sure. And then, uh, so are you able to share what barley varieties are used in the North Star? And sure. Um, what are currently, the, the what's that? Oh, sorry to interrupt oh, no. you. Um, and then it was, if so, what are the benefits of the varieties we selected to use? Yeah, absolutely. Um, right now we're, we're looking at targeting Explorer and Synergy, um, particularly Explorer. Uh, the benefit we get from Explorer is that it actually is a European variety that was brought over to, to North America and is one of the few um, European varieties that actually grew very, very well in the Midwest. Um, it's, uh, it's a very nice variety. Farmers really like it a lot. It yields very well. It's, uh, to me, as a you know, former maltster, it, it it's, it's a jack of all trades variety. You can, you can make it do a lot of different things. So it's, it's a really good in the, in the malt house. Um, and like I said, the benefit is, is, is it's uh, Midwest. We can source it from the Midwest. So um, the other variety is Synergy. Synergy is actually a, a Canadian variety that also found itself uh, able to grow pretty well in um, you know, the Dakotas and uh, Minnesota. So that's another one that we are kind of targeting for this. This one, Synergy is a little bit more difficult to kind of hold in uh, the, the range that I'd like to see it in. Um, but uh, the blend of the two, I think will complement each other nicely. Um, so those are the two that, that we're really targeting for this at this time, so. Sure. 
Um, and then one other, other than pills, what beer styles would this uh, North Star Pills be applicable to? Like I said, pretty much, pretty much any beer style you want. It's a, it's a nice clean palette. So, I mean, it, and it's a nice low color. So, you know, it's really not going to negatively affect um, anything in that regard. It's, it's a nice, nice product to be able to stand alone and something like a, you know, a Pilsner, Kolsch, you know, anything that's on the lighter end of the spectrum, but it's also nice that it's not going to inter, you know, interfere with, um, you know, the flavor and color of specialties you want to add there, you know, especially if you're not adding a heavy specialty malt bill, it, um, it, it'll do very well for that. And, you know, it's still going to have the ability to, to break down a little bit of adjunct if it needed to. Um, it's going to have a nice enzyme package to it as well. So. Well, excellent. That is the only open questions I have right now, unless anybody else has anything else to add. Um, we still have a little more time. Um, unless you have anything else you'd like to add, Jason, anything that comes to mind? Uh, no, I mean, I think, you know, I think the, 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 the Pilsner is, is one that I think people will find that it's, it's a pretty, uh, it's a pretty nice product. Like I said, um, our other products, uh, our, our, our other Pilsner products are very good as well. It's just, this one is going to maybe just because of the processing difference, it's going to lend a little bit different flavor. So if you weren't, maybe weren't finding what you needed in our, uh, current, um, Pilsner, maybe this one will be more suited to, to what you're looking for. Um, you know, I don't want to say it competes head to head with certain European, um, Maltsters, but it's going to be much closer to that range than than what our current North American um, Pilsner is going to be. And in the oats, you know, that one I think was uh, is one that you know I said is in a lot of today's really hot styles that you see out there. Um, it's going to be a good fit for that. Should be something that gives you know a nice uh, nice haziness. Um, should be good for in you know and in smaller quantities and other beers it should be good for head retention and, and things of that nature mouthfeel so i think uh i think that one you know even though i think that got brought to the table more because of the hazy ipas and and it, it's also something that would go good in stouts and as we get into the the fall and winter seasons i think it's a good fit for a lot of those uh, more hearty uh beers that we see so well, it's exciting. I know that we're uh, working on other stuff too. So it's, um, it's, it's fun to launch these new malts and, and expand the uh, portfolio that we have. So absolutely. Um, so yeah, that's it for questions. Uh, so okay. with that, you know, Jason, thanks for sharing your expertise and knowledge with us today. Thank um, you. And if you do have further questions, please send them to webinars at bsgcraft.com. And we'll work with Jason to get some answers. And remember, you can register for future webinars on our website at bsgcraft.com forward slash webinars. And that tile and link is also available right on bsgcraftbrewing.com's homepage. So um, from everyone at BSG, thanks for tuning in. I'm Dan Carney, and I'll see you around. Cheers. Thanks, everyone.